So uh, a massive welcome. My name is Catherine Muller. I am MD for Daxi in the UK and Ireland. Um, so a huge welcome to today's session, which is entitled Crypto, a beginner's guide for accountants and IFA. So a huge hello. Uh, so look, there's loads of people listening to this call live, which is great. I'm sure lots of people will be listening to the recording. Um, so today is Friday the 26th of June. Uh, we are in the middle of a massive, massive UK uh, heat wave. So anyone listening to this live is pretty hot and bothered, I'm sure. Um, so all the facts and figures and market data I will give you today uh, are correct as of today. Uh, so let me just share my screen. I'll just find that button there. Lovely. Very good. Press that. Great. And we, we are away. Um, so yes, a huge, huge welcome. Um, for those of you listening live, there is a chat function. If you're new to Zoom, uh, if you go, I think, to the bottom of your screen, it will give you a little black pop-up. Um, and there's both a Q&A and a chat uh, function. So if you want to interact whilst we're speaking, uh, very, very glad uh, to hear from you. So the purpose of today, um, Daxi is a digital asset exchange. We have offices in the UK uh, and we deal with a, a growing number of accountants and IFAs, uh, many of whom in that community are extremely curious about crypto. I'm all well aware that until relatively recently, um, whilst there's been a lot of curiosity and a lot of great uh, PR, um, there's also been really a lack of regulatory framework. Um, and it's not been possible very often for IFAs and accountants to, to get involved. But as crypto is now becoming a lot more mainstream, um, I think there's a bit of concern if they don't learn about it, they'll be left behind. Um, so we are the leading company for education in the crypto space, and we particularly specialise uh, on people that uh, haven't uh, really encountered crypto before. So we particularly embrace people that are, are early on uh, in their journey. So a huge welcome. Hopefully today's session will be of interest to you. So firstly, a quick disclaimer. Um, the information that I will be discussing today is not investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice. Uh, rather, it's education, inspiration, and information. So as I say, um, Daxi is the leading business in terms of education. Um, all the education is free. It's online. We run webinars. We have eBooks. We have loads of video content. Um, so completely free and accessible whenever you see fit, primarily aimed at people that are new to their crypto uh, journey. And of course, um, we try and make it palatable and, and easily accessible. Um, so we are considered an authority in that space. Um, we receive press inquiries for our opinion, either on the crypto market or on where specific coins are going price wise. Um, and you'll see us across a wide variety of media, whether it's uh, fintech media, uh, specialist crypto media or more general uh, mainstream. Um, so we've got a huge amount of coverage, which is which is actually uh, phenomenal. So um, I want to keep today's presentation to half an hour, there or, or thereabouts. I've um, got quite a, a busy, busy agenda. Um, so look, I want to talk about the regulatory environment. Um, increasingly, uh, we see more coming out uh, from the regulator, which is fantastic. So just to give you a bit of context to, to where we are right now. I want to talk about Daxi, um, about what we do uh, as a business and why we're finding so much traction from a UK um, and Irish marketplace. I'll talk about some of the businesses we work with, so some of the people that we collaborate with um, that are seeing a strong demand uh, in crypto from their, their client bank. I will talk a bit about the background to crypto. So I'm going to talk about uh, what drives that marketplace, a bit of a beginner's guide, um, I suppose, why it's a great time to be involved in crypto uh, and what's going on more broadly. I'll talk about which cryptos are reputable. There are about five and a half thousand different coins out there, so there's a lot to... Uh, to sift through as it were. I'll talk about our referral program, about how today we work with accountants, wealth managers and IFAs. Um, the kind of support that we give people that are looking um, to expose themselves to this sort of knowledge. And finally, I'm very excited to welcome two guest speakers uh, who come from a very regulated uh, background, two individual speakers, one from a two decade banking career for a high street bank, um, and another one from an accounting background. And both of those will talk about their journey in terms of crypto uh, they've been involved in uh, for a couple of years and how they found that journey and, and how they got started. 
So um, hopefully that will um, be, uh, be of interest. So look, in terms of regulation, um, I think we have to very much acknowledge that the crypto was the Wild West for an extended period of time. There was bad exchanges, bad ideas, bad products. And I think the primary concern is that very often the crypto businesses are based in the back of nowhere and beyond, and there's not really any context uh, for your involvement. So you wire, you know, a thousand pounds to buy some Bitcoin or whatever other, other coin, and you're not really sure where the money's going or what the protection is for you. And understanding that has caused uh, a lot of pain uh, in the industry and a lot of pain for people that have fallen foul uh, of some of the coins that have, have just not done well. So in terms of regulation, um, I think there's a lot going on credibility wise. Um, we're one of the few exchanges that has a UK office. Um, and of course, the FCA is showing increasing interest in crypto. Um, the starting point being that, you know, they didn't govern it. Uh, it's not a financial instrument. And frankly, they weren't really interested. So fast forward, um, we obviously see that um, uh, Daxi and many other crypto businesses are under the AML and CTF regime. So certainly a key thing to look out for if you're uh, seeing clients that are involved in crypto um, is to make sure they uh, are supervised uh, by the FCA under the MLR. Um, the FCA issued a directive recently, which is from the 10th of January next year. Um, they will be uh, required to make themselves known uh, essentially to, to the FCA. So quite rightly, um, very much uh, having to comply with the KYC and AML rules, uh, as we do, of course, through, through our platform. So you do have to register with the FCA before conducting business, and Daxi, of course, as a business, um, has done that. But I think the key thing here is uh, you want to make sure that the crypto that you're involved with, um, of course, is, is under that. So I'm very conscious that this uh, session is designed for accountants. So I certainly don't want to preach to the choir. And of course, I am not an accountant myself. Um, but HMRC has issued guidance both on individuals. Um, and HMRC says that um, buying and selling will typically uh, amount to an investment activity. Um, and of course, they will pay capital gains on any capital gains tax on any gains they realize. And only in exceptional circumstances would HMRC expect individuals to buy and sell with frequency um, that it would be considered uh, a financial trade in itself. And of course, uh, income tax will take priority over capital gains tax. Um, sorry, there should be a link on this, but um, there is um, you know, considerable amounts of guidance uh, on HMRC's website that you can uh, find easily. Oh, sorry, there's a link uh, just at the bottom. Um, so uh, of course, there's guidance for companies as well. So again, for accountants that are being asked by their customers, look, I've got crypto, it's doing well. I'm making profits, what should I do about that? There is now guidance from HMRC. And I think crypto is a growing industry, uh, both in the UK and in Europe, and of course, globally. Um, so I think it's starting to be taken a lot more seriously. And of course, uh, lots of people making huge profits from it. So I'm sure uh, taking HMRC's eye uh, very much. So I wanna talk a bit about um, keeping yourself safe in, in crypto. Um, in order to purchase crypto, you are likely to be using a digital asset exchange, and that will enable you to buy and hold crypto. An analogy for that, I suppose, is buying holiday money. If I'm going to go overseas, I pop up to the supermarket, which is about four miles from my house, and I see a lovely lady in a booth, and she sells me dollars or euros or, or wherever I'm off to. Um, so digital exchange does that. Daxi is one of the exchanges out there um, that would enable you to purchase. And then you can choose where you store your crypto. Um, so for anyone listening that is old enough to remember online banking coming in, it was quite shocking when it first came out um, that you would be able to do stuff online and not just walk up the high street to see a nice lady. So um, there's two ways of storing. Um, the first is you can store on what looks like a USB stick. Uh, you will need to retain a string of passwords. Um, and there's no ability to reset those passwords if you forget them, which obviously happens occasionally on your uh, online uh, accounts and emails and what have you, you can reset that. Uh, unfortunately, not so uh, with a USB stick. So the alternative is that you uh, store online and there are a number of exchanges in the marketplace um, that do that. So um, digital exchanges are, are an interesting way. Um, you're also able to check the security rating on that. Um, there's an independent uh, business called uh, Mozilla Observatory, which is online, which will check the security of any website in the world. Uh, not just in crypto, literally any website, and they do it, do it live. Um, so we have an independent A plus rating, which is, of course, the highest. Um, and just by means of comparison, most of the high street banks 
uh, if you check their websites would rate anywhere between a B rating and an F just because you know they're banks first and technology uh, businesses second the other thing to look for is of course being able to get out of your crypto as and when you need to hopefully after some growth uh, so we're focused on what's called the blue chip coins, which is Bitcoin, Litecoin and Ethereum. And of course, you're looking for liquidity. If you want a coin that you can sell either because there's a gain or because there's a change of circumstance for the owner. So you need some liquidity so you can you can buy and sell. So you know, key things to look out for, particularly when there's five and a half thousand coins and certainly a reasonable portion of those are not liquid. So you can't exit. The other thing, of course, is regulation and the licenses. Um, Daxi is licensed in Europe. Again, key to look at where any exchange you're working with is based, uh, where they're regulated and, and where they have offices. Um, so, of course, we're compliant with the uh, KYC and AML. Not quite sure how that typo got in there. Apologies. Um, and, of course, we're registered at Companies House in the UK, so you can look us up. Uh, and we've also got FCA crowdfunding licenses in progress. Uh, we will very shortly be a crowd uh, funding business um, as well. So our plan, um, our strategy, if you like, um, as an exchange, um, we're a little bit different from a lot of the exchanges focus on traders, so people that buy and sell every single day, which, which is great, and lots of exchanges make money on charging a little bit for that privilege. Um, so we're a bit different. Uh, most of the people that use our exchange are typically new to crypto, uh, and most of them are looking for holding their crypto. They can get out on the blue chip coins whenever they like, um, but typically they're looking to hold anything between um, three and, and 24 months, which is, which is great. So um, we're aimed at a slightly older crowd. If you look at a lot of the sort of companies that are in the crypto space, they're uh, very young, hip and trendy and very millennial focused. Whereas unusually um, our audience tends to be slightly older. Uh, most of our platform users are between 35 and 65 years of age. Um, and of course, because we are UK uh, present uh, in the UK, we have offices just uh, in the middle of Oxford, uh, which normally I'd be sitting in, but of course I'm not due to, due to lockdown. Um, we're actually intending to list on the London Stock Exchange uh, in the next six to 12 months. Um, and we're also looking to imminently bring ISA and pension routes uh, to the marketplace. We believe uh, that's the first opportunity you can own crypto within your ISA. Uh, plenty of um, sort of crypto related products out there, whether they're funds or derivatives or futures. Uh, we simply allow people to hold coins either in their own name, in a bank account in their own name, um, or uh, of course through, through their company. So a quick run through the kinds of businesses that we work with. We collaborate with a broad variety of industries. Uh, we have some IFAs and wealth managers that we work with. I'll talk about um, in the next couple of minutes what motivates that and uh, why people are increasingly coming to the table. We have accountants that we deal with. Uh, one of the speakers that we'll be talking to you today has had a long accounting career. Uh, we work with private individuals that um, just do a lot of networking and have sort of big uh, business or sort of SME uh, relationships. Uh, we work with a good number of trading businesses. I mentioned that we're, we're mostly about holding. So often the trading businesses meet people that don't want to trade, they want to hold. So uh, we work with them, whether they're FX or, or crypto businesses. And we work with a good number of property um, based businesses where property investors are feeling a little bit of pain right now. Um, and those kind of many flavors, whether they're property investment agents, uh, rental agents, um, a huge, huge variety of people that, that work with, with property investors. So I just want to talk about um, some of the reasons that um, a, a substantial UK audience is looking to purchase crypto and some of the reasons why people come to use the Daxi platform. And as I mentioned, um, typically they would be uh, early in their, their crypto journey and nearly always it's the first time that they've, they've purchased. And I think the thing that the majority of our client bank have in common is that they're very focused on the UK wealth crisis. So um, the FTSE 100, this is a year to date, is down by about 18%. And frankly, it's done fairly well, having dropped 25% almost overnight as coronavirus hit. Uh, more broadly, globally, uh, we've seen about $9 trillion wiped off global stocks. And of course, um, yeah, a lot of our vanilla financial uh, products would be, would be based on the FTSE 100. Um, and of course, we have record lows in terms of the base rate. So the 0.1 rate, which is the Bank of England's current base rate, uh, is the lowest on record ever over the couple of hundred years it's been around. So um, this is just a little screenshot of Money Supermarket, which is one of the comparison sites for savings. 
And the highest rate I could find uh, on cash that you can access is 0.75%. And for that reason, I think there's a lot of um, fear around property investments, traditional financial investments, and people are just looking for a little bit of diversification. We are not an advice business, so we're not, um, you know, going out and telling people what to do. Um, however, there are an increasing audience that are looking to switch some of their cash to crypto. And I think that um, a lot of people that are purchasing crypto today wouldn't have done it three, four years ago when the industry was quite new. Um, and I think, frankly, if the UK was rocking and rolling and, you know, traditional investments were doing well, um, you know, they wouldn't be looking to diversify into the more, more esoteric. So there's really only one reason for that, which is that uh, crypto has been a huge success story uh, year to date and particularly since uh, the coronavirus hit. Um, so these are just some figures on some of the coins that Daxi um, has on their, their platform. So year to date, uh, Ethereum is up 88%, Bitcoin's up 28%, Litecoin's up 7%, and the DAC is up 10%. Uh, so I was just putting these figures together before I came on it to, to broadcast. So really those kind of figures are phenomenal. Uh, crypto, to my knowledge, has outperformed pretty much every asset class. And I think particularly since coronavirus, there's a real sense that it's decoupled from the traditional financial markets. Um, and I'll talk about some of the um, institutions coming to the table in the next couple of slides, but it's been very interesting to me to watch some of the big hedge funds come to the table. Uh, you know, we've seen um, someone like Paul Trudy Jones come out and say that Bitcoin's a, a great hedge against inflation. So I think uh, both from a retail perspective and from an institutional perspective, um, there's a lot of positivity. I was very interested to have um, this forwarded to me, I think last weekend, yeah, last weekend, uh, Saturday the 20th of June. Um, so it's certainly not just for young techies. We certainly are aimed at a slightly older crowd. Um, and it was great to see some coverage in the, the, Sat the Times on Saturday um, saying that someone had pulled some money out of leading stock market funds to invest in Bitcoin. And I wouldn't be so rude as to say how old the people in that photo of, but I think we can all agree uh, they are not trendy young millennials. So look, um, why now? Um, I think um, Daxi puts out a huge amount of industry analysis. We have a lot of webinars, a lot of um, video recordings. We have some really great eBooks, which are free and on our website. And if you haven't got them, um, either get them from us or contact the person that introduced you. Um, and I think that we're very focused on where we're at as an industry right now. Uh, Bitcoin has, particularly as the poster child of crypto, been around a long time now. Um, and look, there was a huge wave of adoption early doors. People made thousands of percent, which is, which is wonderful. They were, they were early adopters. Um, but look, you see a lot more institutions and retail businesses coming to the marketplace now. And of course, that adoption as more and more people use it day in, day out, does drive price growth. And one of the things we talk about is the forthcoming crypto boom. Um, and certainly every day we see more information in the media. Uh, one of the things that happened recently is the Bitcoin halving. Uh, they happen approximately every four years. Um, and that happened on the 11th of May. And when I wake up in the morning, uh, the first thing I do is check the news on BBC uh, news app on my phone. Um, and that was actually uh, being reported on, on BBC, which is, which is fantastic. So a bit of background um, on some people that are, are coming to the table. And I think it's an important story um, of credibility. So there are some substantial payment and retail businesses that have come out uh, in support of crypto. Um, so obviously uh, MasterCard and Visa are some of the world's biggest payment businesses. Uh, MasterCard has got um, digital wallets. Visa, uh, you can pay um, in crypto through their relationship with Coinbase. Uh, PayPal um, is live in 200 countries, has got patents in the area, um, is rumoured to be doing a lot more Bitcoin uh, in the very near future. Uh, eBay has said they're looking to accept it on the platform and you can spend it today at Amazon, Starbucks and Uber. So some of the world's biggest payment and retail businesses coming out in support um, and look for them to be spending millions of pounds updating their platforms, I think, think is key. More importantly, at a banking and infrastructure level, um, the cryptos are, and people that are into it are super evangelical, but the very abbreviated version of the argument for cryptos, and I certainly want to keep uh, today's session as just a taster for that. Um, the argument is that it's a quicker, better and improved method of conveying value. And you'll see a lot of chat around Bitcoin being talked about as a digital gold or a better version. Um, but the thing that has been proven so far is that it's much cheaper 
So you can say there's been transactions of billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin, which have you know cost a handful of dollars. And unsurprisingly, there's some really big important businesses that are interested in that. Uh, so New York Stock Exchange uh, is is out in support of blockchain. Uh, BlackRock, which is the world's largest asset manager in terms of assets under management, just shy of $7 trillion, uh, has blockchain projects. Um, DTCC, which is by a long way the largest financial processor by value in the world, uses blockchain. And of course, City and JP Morgan. So a lot of chat around infrastructure businesses using blockchain uh, and talking about cryptos. And of course, a number of big hedge funds, whether it's the Medallion Fund uh, or Paul Schubert Jones. So again, um, people that are integral to global financial infrastructure. And I think particularly since the coronavirus recession hits, um, there's no, um, no uh, chance that we're not looking down the lens of a, of a new normal. So I think uh, there's a real sense the current infrastructure is not fit for purpose and really what role blockchain and digitized currencies can play. Um, so there's a number of central banks that are talking about digitizing their currencies, uh, including the Bank of England, uh, the European Bank, the People's Bank of China. Um, so I think there's a lot of chat. I think that probably about 80% of um, you know, banks are looking to use, of national banks are looking to use digitized currencies. So even people that are not comfortable, interested in crypto, um, it's likely that this technology will become dominant and actually likely if they digitize currencies uh, with central banks that will be using that uh, without uh, even knowing about it, I suppose. So just a couple of minutes on which cryptos. Um, I've mentioned that there are five and a half thousand plus cryptocurrencies. Um, so anyone can come up with a coin and they put out what's called a white paper to talk about the use um, and how it will be, be put together. Um, if you're very into technology, some of them make, make really good reading. So waking up and thinking, yes, I'm interested in crypto, essentially you need to sift through those five and a half thousand and work out uh, which ones are reputable. Um, so I think what's interesting is to look at the traded volumes per day. So this is actually today's previous 24 hours. So um, this information is regularly available from uh, CoinMarketCap. So there's 13 billion pounds worth of Bitcoin traded, 5 billion pounds worth of Ethereum and 1 billion pounds worth of Litecoin. So just to be clear of those five and a half thousand cryptocurrencies, most days, most 24 hour periods, those three coins make up for between 70 and 80% of global traded volume. So I'll just say that again, out of five and a half thousand, there are three coins that make up 70% of traded volume. So I think tells quite a good story about, in my opinion, you know, they're likely to wither away all of those other huge amounts of coins. And look, I think um, we know that the institutions come out and talk enthusiastically about those three. Um, so certainly as a platform, those are the ones that uh, we, we are focused on. Um, so DAG is an exchange does, does two things. Uh, we have what's called a blue chip bundle. Um, so that means that anyone that purchases coins through our website um, would have whatever they purchase in their own name or in their company name, of course, split between 50% Bitcoin, 20% Ethereum, 10% Litecoin and 20% DAC coin. Uh, we also have people that are interested in the DAC because it has improved massively. The capital growth over the last year has been about 400%. So there are also people that purchase uh, pure DAC uh, on its own. Uh, and we have many clients you know, setting up accounts daily um, on our website, which is great. Um, and of course, because uh, we're a digital business, they can do that from home, which has been key during the lockdown. Um, so it's a very low starting level, um, the minimum uh, account is £100 um, and we're also working shortly on the regulated route which would be ISA um, and pension. So um, I just want to talk about um, the kind of support we offer for the people that we, we work with. Um, so we have a referral program so people refer um, users to our, our, our website um, and on clients that then open accounts that's all digitally tracked on the DAC pack um, the referring agent gets 20% and on the bundle, the agent gets 10. So we have a broad variety, like I say, of people that, that do that. We also have master agents uh, who recruit affiliates and then earn an override. And because that's all fully automated and online, um, that has, as you can imagine, uh, been pretty popular uh, during, during lockdown. So there's a huge amount of support. Um, as I say, we are the leading business for educating people in this space. Um, there's no cost. I get very confused when people say you can learn about it, but it, it will cost you money. 
We're also, to my knowledge, the only crypto business which has a certification program. So to be an affiliate, uh, you have to pass an exam through us. Um, it has a very high standard um, that in order to pass, you have to get 100% on our online exam, which you can reset, um, but we're very focused. We have hundreds of affiliates that have passed, which is great. Uh, we're relatively new, um, so we have, we've been going a couple of years, but we're certainly by no means saturated in terms of market coverage. And there's a relatively small amount of representation uh, so far. Um, and I think just because of crypto being a good news story, and obviously it's been some challenging few months in the UK, um, it's been exciting times for us. And again, just having a regulated, excuse me, an automated business, um, which is regulated in Europe, has obviously been um, very popular. And we do a lot of online content in terms of uh, webinars, online seminars, uh, either held by Daxi or we're guest speakers under other people's brands. And we just want to provide that one-to-one -one support for people that are, are on their, their crypto journey. Um, so in terms of marketing, um, we have a very active uh, community. So we have a Facebook group and a WhatsApp group. And we have huge amounts of content. We're conscious that crypto is a complex topic um, and people are often new to the industry. So we, we try and create a lot of content, which is powerful. And I think probably our, our eBooks, our webinars and our blue paper are, are the most uh, easily consumed and most popular. And um, the certification program uh, we're very proud of. So we do encourage all of our affiliates to sit that. We share loads on social media. We've got email campaigns ready to go. Um, so really we try and provide everything that we know our affiliate community would, would need, uh, whether it's due diligence. And of course, we do have a global compliance officer um, who sits in Australia to support businesses um, in making sure that they have uh, everything that they need. So, um, oh, and you'll see loads of PR. Um, if you follow us on social media, you'll see all of that. Um, and we also have a very exciting free coin offer. Um, so in terms of driving traffic to our site, and uh, we actually give away the DAC for free. Um, again, um, all of our affiliates are able to take advantage of that. Um, so there's a free 1,000 coin offer, uh, which we use for all new customers and all our affiliates are welcome to, to take advantage of. So look, I was told to talk for 25 minutes. I'm just at the end of that. I wanted to uh, just stop sharing my screen and introduce some guest speakers. Uh, so could I ask, uh, probably if I have Paul first, can I ask you to unmute? Um, and I think I ask you to unmute. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Hi, Catherine. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm very good. I think what I need to do is probably uh, make you a host so you can share your video. Okay. So I'll try that. I'm really sorry. Zoom keeps changing around stuff that it does. Yeah. Oh, there you are. We've got you. Hopefully Hi. everyone yeah. can see you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how, so, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. So um, cool. I invited Paul on today. He's had a very, very varied career um, as an accountant. He's been very involved in SMEs. He's been a CFO. He's done audit. Um, so you felt like a very good uh, person to, to invite on. So thank you so much for, for donating your time so willingly. Um, so look, I don't want to steal your thunder. Can you just talk us through uh, the career you've had? It's, it's a long one, but perhaps you can just highlight uh, sort of from a financial uh, yeah. sort of sector, um, what, how you've, what you've done so far, that would be great. No problem, yeah. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. And thanks, Catherine, that was a good presentation. I suppose just to, my, uh, to try and summarize very quickly and briefly uh, where I've been on the journey in business and I suppose over what next year will be my 40th year in business uh, since I left school in 1981. So I started out into accountancy at a very young age and I'm still in there but I wouldn't be your typical probably profiled accountant. Uh, I'd have an entrepreneurial player. Uh, anybody that would know me on this side of the water would know that I've been involved in, in several different businesses uh, over those years, uh, while continuing maybe in the accountancy, uh, in, the, in, the, in the accountancy profession, but in latter years concentrating primarily on consultancy work and, and a number of other business ventures that I'm involved in. But just to give you a very brief background, started in 81, uh, went in as a trainee, went on to become through the junior uh, management into senior management uh, here in Ireland. That journey brought me then to uh, being appointed in the UK in 1988 to a business services manager 
in Grand Thornton. Everybody probably on the call will know the name Grand Thornton, but I, I suppose my claim to fame of Grand Thornton uh, as a whole is that I was the youngest ever uh, business services manager appointed within their whole organization. Uh, so that was a nice claim to fame at the time for me. And given that I was coming from an Irish background, uh, that led me on to an appointment in the bakery industry. So I was swinging from private practice into obviously in industry and that industry, like I said, being the, the bakery industry. And that was Irish pride here in Ireland. Irish Pride were an amalgamation of uh, many privately owned bakeries and I was in that role for uh, nearly six, uh, no, nearly five years, you know, so I got substantial experience, obviously, and I was responsible for bakeries, uh, amalgamated as they were, but uh, and growing a brand here in Ireland, which has become a very successful brand, Irish Pride, uh, but had responsibility for Wexford, which was the production plant, uh, Tortoise in Tipperary, which is in the middle of the country, for anybody that's not familiar with it, and Dublin, where we had started uh, from Burton, from ground zero, as it were, to break into the Dublin market and compete against the likes of Brennan's and Buttercrust and well-established brands. So needless to say, I got a lot of experience from that. I uh, went on from that to set up my own practice uh, in 1990, uh, 1994. And that practice, I had, I would have had 10, 12, pe uh, 10, 12 people at uh, one stage working with me there. Uh, but I wanted to go on to do other things. So I subsequently sold that practice and uh, went out on the entrepreneurial journey. But whilst on that journey, I also was asked to become a, a chief uh, or CFO on an interim basis to a firm uh, that are, and two guys that were two close friends of mine. And I did that for about 18 months. That was in the uh, in the aircon uh, business, you know. So that gave me a, obviously a totally different background in that uh, in that kind of industry, you know. And since then, I've been involved in the setting up of consultancy uh, licensee. I've been a country licensee here for ITCP uh, for business. Uh, support international in Ireland, uh, went on to be a member of the IIB, which is the Institute for, Indi Institute for Independent Business, based in the UK, but uh, we have members here in Ireland, and not alone UK and Ireland, but all over the world. I've been in there since June 2013. And uh, in the latter part, and more recently, I suppose I'm the founder here of a brand new company here in Ireland, which some of my colleagues are, are involved with in, uh, on this call in Audit Intelligence Ireland, which is uh, a mortgage uh, a mortgage advisory service where we were able to run reports in, uh, in terms of overcalculation uh, of interest and all that kind of stuff. So that's a very brief background in terms of where I've come from and where I am. During all those years, uh, I just took a note here, I have been involved uh, directly and indirectly in areas such as life and pensions, investments, film relief, uh, investments, business expansion schemes, forestry and property, and that whole area of wealth management, which I suppose I've always, I have an open door policy, a very open mind, which has led me into the crypto world because I genuinely feel it's the way forward uh, for the, you know, for business in general, uh, you know, and I suppose that's part of the reason I'm on this call. So that's, okay, okay, great. Us, yeah. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. So what are you just, I think you've, you're leading into my next question very nicely, which is, you know, you said you think it's the future. What, what was it that inspired you or a few of the things that inspired you to get into crypto, both from a personal perspective and from a sort of a recommendation perspective? Okay, I, I, in summary, the answer to that, uh, Catherine, is I, I come from a very successful sporting career, okay, and I'm involved in sporting management in the middle of all of that, but I had a long career here in uh, in Hurling, in, in Ireland, and uh, I actually played, believe it or not, in, in the UK uh, with Father Murphy's over there while I worked over there in, in the UK. I'm lucky enough to be one of the guys in Ireland that has an All Ireland Club medal, which is the highest honour in the game you can win here uh, with your club. 
that went on to represent my county. But the reason for bringing that in is that in sport, you have a mindset, you have to have a mindset, right? That uh, you need to be a step ahead of the player that you're on, right? And you do everything, uh, you know, to give yourself that advantage uh, to be better than whoever you're going to be meeting on the field of play. I think business and in life, it's very much similar. You know, you need to equip yourself, and particularly in, biz in the business world, and stay ahead of the game. And the only way I feel as a professional that you can stay ahead of the game is gain new knowledge. And I said to Alan yesterday, knowledge is power, you know, if it's obviously used and constructed in the right way. And if not, if you don't do that, you, I'm just saying that you fall behind, you lose ground to your competition. And once you lose that ground, it's very difficult to, to retrieve it. That answers okay. the question. Okay. Very good. Okay. So um, what due diligence, obviously waking up and saying, right, I'm going to do crypto is quite a scary day. Um, I personally um, have had a, a reasonable uh, career in blockchain. Um, it's actually my third blockchain business. I've done some advisory work for two businesses, one of which was valued at 5 million, the other one at 15.4 million. Uh, I've been involved in crypto personally for a couple of years now, but when you wake up and say, right, this is what I'm, I'm interested in, what kind of due diligence did you do to make sure you were working with the right company and doing the right thing and, and keeping yourself safe? Okay, well, look, the due diligence was cut short for me in a lot of respects because I, uh, Alan Bell, who's on the call here uh, from Ascentive, uh, introduced me to the whole concept of Daxi. And uh, Alan and myself go back, we go back a number of years. And to be honest, uh, with everything that Alan put in front of me, uh, I was quite satisfied uh, that Daxi was a good way to go. And, you know, I, I was more than happy to join him on the journey. And that's where I feel I am now. I'm in a very early stage of this journey. I have a very open mind to learning. And, uh, you know, I suppose I'm learning as I go. I carry out some due diligence as I go. But you're in there as an MD of, uh, of this business. I'm very impressed with you uh, in terms of your approach and how you're dealing with things day by day, week by week. And uh, there's all the due diligence that's there. It's in the reports that are provided. I see it being very transparent, you know, and transparency is the key for me. All right. Very good. Okay, wonderful. Okay, yes, I think, you know, you're very education focused. And I think a lot of the IFAs and accountants we're dealing with come to us with the opening gambit. Uh, I want to educate myself. I'm not saying I'm going to Barney. I'm not going to say I'm getting involved. I just want to know about it. And we're quite unique as a business because we're education led and it's all free. You can come to us and take up 20 hours of free education and then do nothing or go to one of our competitors. And we, we don't care. There's nothing we can do about it because we know that our education is industry leading. So it's likely that people that do want to get involved will, will use us. So that's great. Yeah. And look, one final question. I don't want to um, upset your privacy or ask you for figures or anything like that. But um, in terms of your own personal exposure to crypto, um, has that worked out well? Has that been a positive experience for you? Um, just tell us very briefly a little bit about that. Yes, it has been. It's positive and positive from the point of view that um, you know I'm happy enough to 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 put to, to go forward and invest more on a personal level with Daxi, which I intend doing over sure. over the course of this year, the remainder of this year. And um, like I said, I just I'm, I'm in the very early stage of this journey, you sure. know, uh, yeah. and I just need to I need to to, to spend more time at it. But uh, to be honest with you. Like crypto, the, the mere mention of crypto to an awful lot of people, uh, you know, particularly people here in Ireland, maybe it's the same in the UK, but uh, a lot of people have got burned uh, and some sure. badly, you know, yeah, uh, in the in the in the business of crypto, and the mere mention, like I said, just as it put it puts them off, you know, but um, I think you have to try and overcome that, and sometimes you just have to. You know, you have to handle people with care, and if that's the case, sure. they have got they have got some with it. Well, then you've got to try and put a different approach to them. You know, and I see that sure. being that new approach. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so no much. Problem. Paul. Thanks, uh, Catherine. If I can get you to meet yourself, please, uh, Paul. And I just want to introduce 
uh, Hugh, so what I think I need to do is probably take back host rights, I think, or give them to Hugh. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Hugh, can you unmute yourself? Are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, perfect. Um, so Hugh is our second speaker. Uh, I am super thrilled that Hugh has joined us. So uh, Paul comes from a very varied accounting, uh, financial management background. He, um, on the other hand, Hugh has spent uh, two decades, is that right, working for a uh, high street uh, retail bank? Would that be correct? Indeed. Yeah. So um, look, I just want to ask you um, a few questions if that's okay. I'm really sorry. I don't know how I can... I think, Paul, you might need to turn yourself off being a host now, if that's okay. I would really love to have you on video, Hugh, but I don't know if... Um, Maybe I'll start, I'll start, ask you a question, then I'll fiddle with it in the background if that's okay. Um, so yes, Hugh, could I start by asking you just to give a uh, abbreviated version of your background in banking, please? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, my background was over 20 years with Clydesdale Bank. I ended my career in banking as payments manager of the bank's international division, responsible for international payment um, and chaps transmissions for the National Australia Group within the UK. After leaving the banking world, I um, bought a sub post office as a family business and also worked as a consultant for a major international engineering company and devised a global cash management strategy for them before widespread adoption of the euro. Oh, very good. Okay. Um, great. And I know obviously you've been, how, how long have you been involved in crypto? So that's a question I should have asked you. And uh, what inspired you? What was it that made you think, yeah, this is something I want to take seriously. You know, I think this is, this has got legs. Um, I was introduced to crypto in August of last year by some uh, colleagues um, who I was involved with through Business Network International, BNI. I, I was the, the franchise for Scotland. Um, my belief in crypto comes from the fact that everyone in, reaches a stage in life where having achieved pretty much everything we want, at least in material sense, everything we do is for our children. Um, and in general, we come to appreciate that life is all about helping others and we're no longer... Oh, we've just lost you for a second. Sorry, Hugh, can you hear us? You just dropped out there, my love. Um, yeah. I think you're back, and I think if I make you host, we can have your video. So uh, let me just try that. Apologies. Make host. So you should be able to do video now. We can see Hugh's good looking face. There you are. Hurrah. Right. Sorry. So you, sorry, you're just saying that um, you, you thought you'd achieve what you wanted to. And sorry, and then you blanked out. So if you can get back. Yeah, to okay. Well, just basically, everyone comes to the same position in life that everything you do. Um, is for your children um, and more generally we come to appreciate that life's all about helping other people and we're no longer shackled by you know self-interest so that that tends to free up thinking and um, today the way I see it and COVID-19 has just served to exacerbate this um, the world is in crisis um, it's caused by inflationary measures such as quantitative easing and that is only going to get worse uh, and I believe that we will see global hyperinflation within the next two years. The exponential rate uh, at which technology is progressing re results in natural deflation. And yet economies the world over continue to battle this with inflationary measures uh, rather than embrace deflation. So the current system is broken, but to fix it will require international cooperation. Um, oh. No one country can do it alone. Um, I believe that um, we need a Bretton Woods style agreement to do that. Um, I think that will eventually happen, but in the meantime, we are left in crisis. One part of the solution will be the adoption of a global currency that is independent of the economies of individual countries and Bitcoin or something similar, which is by its very nature, anti-inflationary will serve that need. Okay. Very good. And I think look, where you're coming from a banking background, you're clearly very interested in, in sort of the in infrastructure. And look, I think there's a, I mentioned there's a sense of it's not fit for purpose, but to see talk of negative interest rates in the UK for my generation is, is just, just mind blowing. So look, tell me about the due diligence that you did uh, when you last August started to, to get involved. What were you, what were you looking for to give you that confidence? 
Well, in terms of diligence, I always try to look behind business plans and study the fundamentals. Um, although I was introduced to that actually by people that uh, I've known and trusted for over 20 years in business, I quickly realized that there is much more to Daxi than mere crypto. Um, the world is crying out for the ecosystem that Daxi is developing um, for crowdfunding, peer-to-peer, -peer, for SMEs, for organizations, uh, for crowdfunding and equity and property, the tokenization, if you like, of assets, and for the opportunities that are being presented in crowd investing in digital assets and crypto. That's what makes it so exciting for me. Everyone um, on here should look um, on YouTube for a video called the Dax Daxi Ecosystem, the long-term view for the DAC coin, which explains all this very clearly. I knew virtually nothing about crypto before I became involved last year, but I've immersed myself in it ever since. As you said, Catherine, there are around five and a half thousand um, different crypto coins out there. 99% of them um, were created by computer geeks with no other purpose than to prove to themselves that they could do it. Um, the most sure. important thing to study with any um, crypto asset is what we call the use case. Daxi has the best use case of any crypto asset that I've looked at. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and look, just one final question. Again, I don't want numbers or figures because that's your your private business. Um, but how has that journey been for you as a, a personal investor? Um, you mentioned you came on board last August, and obviously, you know, there is volatility in that marketplace. I think we have to acknowledge that. So, what I suppose is your short and long term view of the uh, the purchases you've made? Well, we write about volatility, but it's always important to look at longer term trends rather than short term volatility. When people ask me, you know, that question, how much have you made from crypto so far? I always smile um, as if any, any worthwhile opportunity was some kind of get rich quick scheme. Um, everyone here knows that opportunity is all about being in the right place at the right time, getting in early. And if you want to talk about the blue chips, we're now at the stage where the involvement of the, the world's major financial financial institutions that you mentioned in the retailers, hedge funds managers, the fundamentals um, of that means that the coming explosion um, is going to be sustainable and long term rather than previous rises that were predicated mainly from speculators and traders. Um, you can and you should obviously do all the diligence in the world, but when it comes um, to uh, a, a, an opportunity that you've been introduced to by people that you've come to, to know and trust, um, and when you see a concept that you know, there's a crying need for, that is what, in my opinion, makes the difference. Wonderful. That's really great. Thank you so much. That was just um, some, some really great comments. So I'm just going to reclaim my host rights. Ooh, enter the host key. I don't want to do that. Would you be able to give me my host? Oh, no, I've got it. I've got my host rights back. Uh, technology or oh, not for everyone. So um, that was great. Thank you so much to our uh, guest speakers. Uh, I just want to return to one more, more slide. Uh, so um, next steps. Um, hopefully you found today's content interesting. Huge amounts of learning ahead of you if you're getting into uh, the crypto space. Uh, loads available through Daxi. So again, whoever introduced you, uh, please do get hold of uh, the eBooks, uh, the blue paper that I know Hugh's just mentioned. Uh, there's lots of webinars with huge lots of events online, often recorded. Uh, so you can just pick and choose what content uh, you choose to get involved in. The online events obviously a great opportunity to have access to the experts, whether it's myself or our founder Ed Lugbrook um, or other uh, professional speaker, Andrew, uh, who's great. Um, or of course, chat to the person that introduced you. It's likely that they know a reasonable amount about Daxi. So I'm just going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop recording.